There we go. So yeah, so hello everyone um, and welcome to, to our session this afternoon. It's actually the last in our series of postgraduate webinars um, uh, this year. Um, and today we're going to talk about our suite of specialist finance programs. So, you know, we're going to talk all about how you can really become an expert in finance and look at some of the uh, some of the specialist finance master's courses that we offer that you can see detailed on the bottom left hand side of the screen um, there. We've got, uh, or I'm in very good company today uh, to talk about uh, studying a specialist finance uh, master's program. So we've got Dr. Zicheng Lu, uh, program director, and we're really uh, pleased to be joined by one of our current students, uh, Nilesh, all the way from oh, India. Yeah. So yeah, so hi guys. Zicheng, do you, should, should, we'll do some introductions. Do you want to go first and, and introduce yourself? What, what's your role in, uh, in the School of Management at, at the moment? Okay, thank you, James. Um, my name is Yicheng Liu, and currently I am a lecturer in finance uh, at the school and also the program director of uh, three of these uh, specialist programs. And uh, before this job, I did a PhD in finance in Bristol. And before that, I uh, had a few years in the uh, financial, financial service industry, <clears throat> in the investment banking industry uh, for two years, I think. Uh, in London, as well as in uh, Hong Kong office. So yeah, glad to meet you guys here. Thank you. Thanks, Zi Cheng. So yeah, a huge amount of industrial experience um, that, that Zi Cheng has. So, you know, you're not, you, it's worth bearing in mind that you'll be benefiting hugely from that, as well as obviously all the other exciting uh, research and things going on uh, in the school, which we'll discuss later on. Nilesh, I'll hand over to you. Do you, do you want to introduce uh, yourself uh, to everyone who's watching? Yeah, thanks, James. So, hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Nilesh Puraya. Uh, I'm currently studying uh, MSc International Finance uh, at Swansea University. Uh, so, you all know, you know, due to current pandemic situations, uh, I'm currently doing my classes online from India only. Uh, and also, yes, uh, we'll be teaching Swansea soon. So, uh, before this, uh, I was, you know, I actually doing my bachelor's in uh, international accounting and finance. So, that the way uh, I came to Swansea and uh, wait for visit there only. And, and here we go. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, Nilesh. It's um, it's going to be really interesting to hear um, later on Nilesh's experience of of, uh, of studying finance um, at the moment and studying it remotely. You know, it's not uh, until well, ho hopefully early early uh, or over the course of the next couple of months that you'll be coming to Swansea to to join us um, you know it's been a it's been a bizarre year so yeah really really great that you're, you're with us uh, today Nilesh so uh, yeah thanks very much for coming along so uh, yeah we've got plenty to get through today um, I will start as we often do with these sorts of sessions with a very very quick overview of who we are and where we are if you're watching this having never been to Swansea before uh, well that's where we are you can see us on the map there on that sandy uh, southwest coast of Wales. Um, I'd like to say it's normally sunny. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is, sometimes not. Uh, but yeah, as you can see on the map, you know, we're, we're about three hours west of London, uh, not too far from, from the likes of Bristol, Cardiff as well. Um, and I've got to plug our, uh, our football team who are, well, hopefully going to be one promotion away from the Premier League. We always say it's, uh, it's just around the corner. So, so that's us in Swansea. Um, and very quickly, just, just to introduce uh, the university, we're made up of two campuses. So we have our Bay Campus and our Singleton Park Campus. Now the Bay Campus is where we're based in the School of Management. Um, so you might notice from these images here that, that it's, a, it's a, pretty modern, uh, a pretty modern building. Indeed, it's a pretty modern campus. Um, it was only opened um, in 2016. Um, so that's where we are, Singleton Park Campus. It's the other campus, it's the older, more traditional campus. Um, and you'll notice that both of them are in pretty good locations next to the beach. Both campuses about 20 minutes either side of the uh, of the city centre. And what's exciting at the moment is we are just about in the year of our centenary. So uh, we're 100 years old. So it's a really exciting time to be part of the family at Swansea University. And if you if you're not uh, if you've never visited us, visited us before, um, it would be really uh, really exciting. You know to have you. Um, on board for what will be our second century, which is quite, quite a, uh, a thing to think about. So, yeah, loads to get through today. Um, you know, we want to hear lots from you guys watching. Um, so questions uh, are welcome throughout the session. Um, so if you're watching live on Zoom, um, 
as I can see a few of you are, you can use the Q&A tab, which is sort of at the foot of the screen. I'm trying to point at it there. Um, if you're watching on Facebook Live, please comment underneath the, uh, the live feed. Um, and my, my excellent colleague, uh, Rebecca, is on hand to, uh, to send your questions in um, straight to us um, to tackle. Um, and of course, if you're watching the recorded version, uh, the on-demand version of the session, you can see our email address on screen there. Uh, myself or any of my colleagues are always going to be on hand to uh, answer your your questions uh, you know at any point basically uh, throughout the year so yeah take a note of that uh, that email address um, you know and uh, and yeah any questions let us know basically we will as well make sure that we've got some time at the end of the session just to tackle um, some questions too and have a bit of a bit of an open discussion as well so I guess we should start at the very top um, and do a bit of an overview of, of what our specialist finance courses are, you know? Um, so we've got three different specialist finance programs. Um, and as you can see, the MSc in investment management, the MSc in international finance, and of course the international banking and finance option um, as well. So perhaps Zi Cheng, we could, we could start with you initially, just to give a bit of an overview of the character of each course. What, what would you say is is sort of the main difference between each each program, aside from the titles, of course? OK, right. Thank you, James. Um, so these programs are well, they've been newly designed for the, the coming uh, cohort 21-22, and they are very uh, distinct from each other. So basically, um, international What's it called? Investment management. This is to train you towards uh, being a investment professional. Um, so the idea of this, of course, I mean, you know, being professional in an investment industry takes years of years of practice. I mean, if you read about Warren Buffett or you know George Soros or those those you know those people, you, you know what I mean. It takes years of practice and uh, eliminating you know personal emotional factors. However. It, this program does give you the foundation. So by the time that you graduate, you should be able to perform a reasonable uh, investment analysis uh, in a financial service company. International finance is more about quantitative analysis. Um, so for example, it has what is called econometrics in TB1, which the other two uh, don't. Um, and in TB2, which is the second uh, teaching block, it has empirical finance. So it's more about uh, academic type analysis. Uh, now, the third one, international banking and finance, as the name suggests, it focuses a little bit more on the banking side of the business because uh, banks are you know, such a different animal, if you like, in the financial service industry. So it, it warrants a, a separate program for that. Uh, so in TB1, apart from some of those compulsory modules that you will see, um, this program uh, teaches you, for example, credit and lending and a bit of a FinTech as well. And well, you may argue the FinTech applies to just about everything now, but uh, it, it sort of starts from the lending side of the business. Uh, so, um, so that's why you, you learn about FinTech there. And then in TB2, you also learn about the regulation side of banking. And as you, know, as you have, you know, as you probably know, uh, regulation is really important in banking business because banking business really is about taking care of people's money, uh, taking deposit isn't it? So, so this is the main, I guess, the main uh, difference among these three uh, programs. So different, different training direction, different aims, um, career-wise. Definitely, yeah. And we'll, we'll have a look, uh, you know, later on in the session, we'll, we'll have a bit of a dive into uh, some of the different modules and some of the highlights, really, of the course. Um, but we, uh, I will be putting Zhi Cheng and Nilesh on the spot later on to ask what their favorite module is um, and have a bit of a discussion about, about you know, the, the real sort of uh, key points of each, each program. One thing, though, at this stage that I think is, is really important to mention um, is that the investment management program in particular um, is accredited as well by the CFA Institute. So this is really important. It's something you know, vital to bear in mind, especially when you're looking at, uh, at different sort of routes into specializing, particularly if you're in, interested in uh, you know, the investment um, aspect of, uh, 
of, of progressing your, your finance uh, career, progressing your, your finance uh, learning. Essentially, it means that the course is, is approved by the CFA. Um, you know, we work very closely with the CFA. And it means that, of course, you pick up a lot of key skills that perhaps your, your, your peers or your potential competitors for those graduate roles might not have. So, Zicheng, how, how does this, the, this CFA accreditation sort of uh, influence the investment management course in, in particular? Yes. Um... I think the biggest impact is the uh, the module syllabus. For example, uh, one of the modules that I teach on this particular program is called International Financial Marketing Institution. Um, a lot of the syllabus are the same as the CFA Level 1 curriculum. Although CFA does not do uh, exam exemption as uh, ACCA uh, does, but it does set a foundation. If you do, you know, for you to 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 go ahead and you know apply for one of those uh, exams uh, of CFA, uh, because it, it does have a lot of uh, thing to cover. Uh, I did. I think I did CFA level uh, one and two. I didn't have time to do level three. Mm -hmm. uh, there were there was a lot. So I wish I I had um, had done this before so that I can save a lot of time. Yes. Definitely. No, that, that's brilliant. So it's, it's worth, yeah, worth bearing in mind. And, you know, of course, there's, there's always, um, yeah, there's always a lot of influence in, in working closely with, uh, with the CFA, which, which brings me on, I suppose, to the, to the next point that a lot of people will be wondering, especially at this stage where, you know, you might be coming towards the end of your bachelor's degree and thinking, what, what on earth am I going to do next? Should I specialize? So we just wanted to highlight, I guess, three things, um, three reasons, perhaps, that, that will really help hopefully make you consider specializing and to talk about some of the values in, uh, in doing so. So first and, and, uh, and foremost, obviously it might sound obvious, but, but to specialize in finance means that it, you're gonna have an excellent opportunity to really master so many of those, those principles and those theories and those techniques that you, you might've heard about quite a lot already um, in your undergraduate uh, degree. Um, but this is your opportunity not just to work with those, but to, act, to, to really master them um, and, to, and to, to get on top of them, to really understand uh, perhaps how, how businesses, um, institutions, how markets are, are working. Of course, you'll also um, apply uh, this academic theory uh, to industry practice, something that, that's, uh, I think, a hallmark across, across the suite of, uh, of, of, of specialist finance uh, programs. Um, and last but not least, and I think that this is really important, perhaps you change, you want to come in here, at the moment, there's a real shortage of, of what would what would sort of call ethical finance professionals, I suppose. Um, so to be to be specialised and to, to have that kind of, um, I guess, high level academic background, to have that insight into the the, the ethics, I suppose, behind uh, finances is, is vital. And this was something Zicheng we we discussed a little bit yesterday. Was was there anything you wanted to add particularly on that? Uh, you know, when it comes to, I suppose, to ethical um, finance professionals and how there is a possibly a bit of a shortage there. Uh, yes, um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in, in, a, in a later section of financial uh, crisis as well. But mm -hmm. what, I, what I can say now is that, you know, think about uh, finance education as uh, teaching you how to drive a car. You know, I think before, you know, you even put your hand behind the, you know, behind the wheels, uh, your, your instructor teach you about driving ethics, you know, slow down in the school district and, mm -hmm. you know, just you know, check the mirror, indicate that sort of thing. Um, and that, that's obviously driving ethics. But in finance, for some reason, um, when you get to the job uh, stage, you, you kind of forget about this. And the only purpose is to make money. Well, of course, you know, making money is, is very good. But people sometimes, you know, forget about... Uh, confuse the cause with the result, mm. you know, and, and, and that's going to cause a, a problem. I mean, if you think about the financial crisis, uh, the damage to the economy and people's life is a lot more than the profit that it was made before the outbreak. Mm. Um, I mean, before the, before the, uh, the crisis. So if you think about it, it, it it's a zero, it's not even a zero sum game It's a, ne it's a negative game, you know? Um, so I think, Ethics is what we're lacking these days, and uh, but that really is the the you know uh, the problem with I think modern financial education. So we we focus on that a lot. Um, 
especially in my, uh, I'm not advertising my, my module, but especially in my module 008, where we talk about, you know, yes, uh, it does make you, what should I say? It does make you rich if you like, but uh, it, it's got to be done in the right way. Otherwise we'll come back to you later. So, yeah. yeah. No, that, that that makes that makes uh, good, yeah complete sense. Oh, I wanted to bring you in here, Nilesh, because um, obviously you're you're currently enrolled on the on the international finance program. What what was your you know we've we've looked there at um, and I'll, I'll bring them up on the screen uh, as, as um, again here sort of in terms of what we kind of loosely um, thought to be the, the key sort of value in specialization. But but Nilesh, what's your own story? What made you uh, yourself want to want to study a specialist finance program uh you know actually uh, right from the starting you know i have a very keen interest in, uh, in reading the financial statements and understanding what actually it is and how actually it works uh, and also the idea of making money with money uh, you know it's a very interesting concept in finance uh, and uh, you know the more of the finance is how you manage the money how you manage the risk of you know the risk of managing the money is also very high uh, and, uh, you know, I, I used to have very keen interest in accounts and finance, you know, the, how it goes, how it flows, how money flows, how actually the business runs and everything, you know, this made me realize that, yeah, uh, I want it, uh, I want to do it, I want to face the real life challenges of managing the money and everything. So this is how I, you know, decided to came into finance and proper finances. Yeah, and, and that was interesting, Lesh. What what did you say? I know you mentioned it at the beginning. Do you mind just repeating what, what you studied for your bachelor degree? Uh, yeah, uh, I actually studied international accounting and finance. Uh, uh, you know, in India, the international accounting and finance course is linked with ECCA. So, okay. uh, you know, parallelly, I was also doing ECCA. So, you know, also uh, in international accounting and finance, you know, what I read in my bachelor was also, you know, that uh, finance. It, it was a part of finance, not a proper finance, but it was a part of finance. So, uh, uh, initially after that you know after you know just going upward you know you need a special of financial degree you know just to compete in the market and also make a presence in the you know, job checkers yeah and, and Nilesh last sort of question on this I keep putting you on the spot but how have you found the step up from I suppose there's two parts to this question generally the step up from your bachelor degree to, to a postgraduate specialist course and also just the change in, in for you personally in sort of, I suppose, educational cultures between between studying at university in India and then studying at university in the UK. Uh, you know, to be frank, uh, studying in India is very, very different and studying in UK is very, very different. You know, actually, when we, the people in India, you know, we generally, the academics are more of theoretical parts. So we used to read theories a lot uh, and understand, yeah, what's going on. But, you know, uh, when you joined the Swansea, uh, right from the starting, it was uh, all practical, you know, uh, what are you studying and how are you doing it? Uh, it's a very big, uh, you know, good part, uh, which I face that, yeah, every every student should get this opportunity. So, yeah, because, you know, what we study in the theory uh, is, uh, you know, somebody somewhat different from the practical life, actually. Uh, and also, you know, just... Uh, you know, at the current situation, shifting from the under, undergraduate to the postgraduate course, uh, it was a bit difficult, you know, uh, doing the online classes and uh, submitting the assignments. Uh, you know, uh, it was, you know, sometimes I used to remember, oh, actually I had to submit an assignment in an hour. So uh -huh. uh, it was a lit little difficult, but, uh, you know, I I'm starting to loving it. Yeah, and that's great. And it'll be, you know, when, when you do eventually arrive in Swansea, hopefully uh, very, very soon, you know, you'll be you'll be well up to speed with with uh, yeah with everything really. So yeah, that's great. And just on this note, before we move on, Zicheng, I I wanted just just to ask you, what would you say? Obviously, as program director, you know, you've you've shaped these these programs. You're you're familiar with the modules and the way that they run. What sort of skills do you need to study on a on a, on a specialist finance course? And I, and I don't mean academically. What kind of skills do you need to really thrive in this? well, on the course and in the industry, I suppose. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, James. It's a very important question. I think over the years, what I find is that you don't need to be, you don't need to be an Einstein to excel. Uh, of course, I, I, I'm definitely not. Uh, uh -huh. But I think you need a good time management skill. For example, I think there is a big escalation from undergraduate to postgraduate in terms of the intensity of deadlines and, you know, submission um, 
usually you have four submissions within two week time. And we try to, you know, put, you know, arrange them, uh, uh, you know, apart, right? To, 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 to make sure that you don't have to submit four pieces of work uh, on one day. But it, you know, who knows? But the, the, my point is, um, this is the same skill that's required in the, in the industry as well. Um, so time management means that you need to be able to work on an average pace during the term. You don't want to wait until the end. I mean, it sounds uh, very easy. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that Nilesh uh, uh, know what I'm, what I'm talking about when it comes to you know, deadline and submission and the stress. Mm -hmm. So I remember a couple of students came to me and said, um, well, I have two deadlines on the same day, three o'clock in the afternoon. Can you, can you, you know, delay the one, one of them? Uh, and I said, if you delay one of them, you will have to, you know, you have the same problem. You ask me to delay it again. So it's not about finishing all the work on the same day, but, but, but to average out your, your workload, that is really important. Uh, I feel that it helps me a lot when I, when it comes to my own research and, my own, you know, just, you know, balancing between different tasks and all that. So if there's, of course, there are other skills as well, but if there's one thing I need to pick, that is definitely time management, especially for a MSc study, I think. Yeah. And that's naturally something that will transfer, and we'll talk about careers shortly, but that's something that's naturally going to transfer very effectively into employment as well, I suppose, after you graduate. Yes. But, okay. What well, on, on that sort of I suppose on that sort of note and talking about the skills that, that, that you need particularly to, uh, to thrive. So, you know, we, we, we want you to thrive in industry and in, in, in the finance industry at the moment, there are, you know, it's, it's uh, we all know what, what the last sort of year or so has been, has been like, there are a lot of issues. One issue though, that I think a lot of people perhaps like myself, who perhaps aren't as au fait with, uh, with, with finances as Yi Cheng and, and Nilesh, um, perhaps haven't grasped is that we're still managing the effects of the financial crisis, um, which which seems now like a, like a long time ago. But uh, yeah, Zi Cheng, I know you you were uh, very keen to just just to discuss this as, as part of the session today. So yeah, how how are we still managing those effects now? And, and yeah, where do we go next? I suppose. Yes. Um, well, where should I start? Um, let me let me start by just describing what I think about finance. I think people tend to think about finance as a continuously evolving subject. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people like to talk about the word new. You know, we're living in a new world, a new era, new this, new that, uh, new product, new market, new tech, new companies, everything is new. However, um, given I think the growing amount of technical know-how and, and what we teach our graduates and what we know, um, we should see a more stable financial market, shouldn't we? Or a more ordered market, a more rational pricing process. But that's not really what we see. We see some of them, yes, but uh, every now and then there is a financial crisis and the frequency and the level of damage of one single financial crisis uh, has been uh, uh, bigger uh, mm -hmm. one after another. And the reason for that is I think if we trace the root of this problem, like I said earlier, is the financial education. You know, it's like you drive a car, like I, like I said, you know, you, you need, to, need to learn about the rules, the potential hazard on the road, driving ethics, you know, things like that. Also basic survival skills. They look at the mirror every now and then indicate, right? Both hands on the wheel, which I don't normally do. Uh, <laughs> switch, switch lane early. Right? Well, something like so. So these are called rational driving. You don't think about it; you just do it because it saves life. It saves your life. It saves the, you know everybody's life. But in the financial part market, many people under certain circumstances they simply forget about the basic techniques, the basic principle, theories, discipline, everything that you probably you probably learn from this module uh, or the, this program, actually, and. But in con uh, instead, you know, become largely possessed by emotional factors. Um, and more importantly, I think somewhere down the line, somewhere down, because I, I saw this before, I was in the middle of the financial crisis myself, it's a complete bloodbath. That's why I had a strong feeling about it. Mm -hmm. um, so somewhere down the line, the purpose of financial service is forgot. It's a service. Um, making money, absolutely. But that's a natural outcome. So service is the cause, 
Making money is the result. You will get rich, but you have to do it the right way. And that's the same in any business, food industry, telecommunication, uh, educa education, uh, whatever. So I guess um, the way that, well, what you learn here is the tool, are the tools of providing a money service, if you like. You know, for example, Nilesh said he, he wanted to, uh, uh, um, what was it? Is it, is it a managing money? So like, for example, the fund business, for example, right? So you're managing people's money and that's the tool that you were learning, not making money itself um, as, as the ultimate purpose. So I think the best way to manage the financial crisis is to, to look at the root, which is financial um, education. One funny thing we'd like to point out, because James mentioned that, you know, the, the financial crisis happened how long was it? What, 12 years ago, wasn't it? 12, 13 years ago, 2007, 2008. And then many of our viewers here are perhaps, I don't know, the age of the age of 12, I think. <laughs> yes. Um, so it, it sounds like a lifetime ago. But here's the thing. Some of you may know Enron, right? The Enron problem, the, the financial, uh, the accounting scandal. When was that? That was 2001. That was just six years before the worst financial crisis of human history, just six years. But then in 2007, nobody was talking about Enron as if it never existed. So I, I and, and believe you me, the underlying product is different, but the principle is exactly the same, exactly the same. So I know, uh, talk about 12 years. We don't even remember what happened six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think time is only relativity. And um, that, that, that's why I think um, financial crisis is, is, is still a relevant thing to think about uh, um, to avoid the next one, you know? Yeah. And if you, if you think, when you get to the job, you know, when you start your job as a financial service provider in uh, whatever uh, sector, think about the thing that you learned, uh, you haven't learned it yet, but you know, think about this, the, the, the basic technique, the basic principle that you learned from this program. Because believe you me, if you do that, it's like driving a car with proper, you know, proper, proper driving uh, 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 style. It will save your life and, and those customers that you serve. I think that's really important. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Yucheng. I can see Nilesh. Nilesh is nodding as well. Did, did you have anything you wanted to add there, Nilesh, or, or is that all making sense to you? Uh, no, I, you know, actually uh, what uh, that, uh, you know, the skills, uh, the, the basic skills are very important for all these things, you know, uh, just like, uh, this, uh, this, just like you put the example of driving the car uh, in finance. Also, we need the basic skills, you know, because if you don't know the base, uh, you know, you can't exactly start uh, like uh, if you don't know how to, you know, change the gears and you don't know how to uh, put a brake on, you can't just go on the highways and drive the road. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's basically good to have a basic skill and it's very important actually. Definitely, yeah. No, that, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, thank you both uh, very, very much. Just got a, a delivery coming to the door. There we are. <laughs> They've seen me through the window. Sorry about that. Okay, so moving on from, from, the, from the financial crisis that, that was, um, let, let's talk a little bit about careers now. Um, and we've had some good questions on this topic. Or, uh, in fact, we've had quite a few questions come through. So those of you who are, um, who are watching, you know, do keep them coming. We'll try and tackle as many as we can as we go through the session. And at the end, I think this is a really good opportunity though to, to answer a couple of the questions that came in over the last sort of five minutes or so. Um, this one, it asks to Zi Cheng directly, uh, maybe Nilesh might have something to add to. Do you think there'll be a bigger call for financial experts following the impact of, of the pandemic? I want to understand the job opportunities and the market. So. Thank, thank you, whoever asked that question. It's anonymous, so it may have come in from uh, uh, from uh, Facebook Live. What do you think, Zi Cheng? Will there be? Do we need more financial experts given what's happening at the moment? I think it will be. However, there's a catch at the moment. In the short term, there is a uh, a drop in recruitment. Uh, now, mainly because of the underlying business is still trying to get out of this pandemic, and we're still in the middle of it. So financial service is based on the underlying business. It's not, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. So if the underlying business is not doing well, uh, supply demand is, is low, then the financial service will be negatively uh, affected and there will be lower 
uh, headcount and recruitment. Um, however, the I think one one thing is one thing that that uh, ensures that there is definitely a future demand for financial experts is the increase in technology, because that is changing the way people do business. Uh, if you look at the uh, the volume, okay, of uh, you know transportation, um, you know, you know, communication between manufacturers and um, end customers or you know middle customers in 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 a, in a different way, then you, you can see that the the business are taking place in a different space in in a, in a cyberspace, and that volume is huge, and that change is going to continue into the future. So it and and that is uh, so if that trend continues, which it will, then there is a larger demand for financial service provider because money essentially is the bloodstream of business. So if business grows, you know more blood need it, and and they need you as well. But I think you have to be a little bit patient um, because the, you know the virus doesn't know when you graduate, right? So so you, know, it, 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 you may have to wait for a little bit. But I think uh, the demand for financial experts will increase. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to take the opportunity to, to, to give the guys, you can now see them on, on the screen, um, a bit of a bit of a shout out our employability team. So those guys are, are based within the School of Management. They're just for students um, in the School of Management. So as well as studying finance, people studying accounting, uh, business, economics. Um, so I suppose what I'm trying to say is that the whole network is focused on uh, on the finance and on the, on the business sort of industry. So, so their networks, the contacts, and therefore their, their advice and their knowledge and their insight into uh, both the graduate employment market as well as, um, as, well as obviously opportunities to, to gain work experience alongside your degree. Their insight on that level is, is, is pretty unrivaled. So, you know, it's, it's things like, like this, as Zi Cheng has, has mentioned, perhaps, you know, with the pandemic at the moment and, and you know, a little bit of more patience is required. Typically, when looking for jobs, we know that. So these guys are going to give you um, the edge. Um, and obviously, on the left-hand side, you know, we've listed just some of the typical opportunities that, that are out there. That, that, to be honest, you guys watching, you're probably aware of this anyway. Nilesh, I, I just wanted to bring you in um, on on this note and and maybe put you on the spot a little bit. It's always a difficult question, but do you have an idea of what sort of specific career you want to go into once you graduate, or are you still kind of getting as much experience as you can and open to, to different opportunities. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, actually I'm uh, open to different opportunities, but uh, you know, my ambition is just to be the, you know, in the, to go into the core finance of the business uh, in the company. Uh, and uh, also I would love to manage the funds of the company itself. Uh, you know, uh, there are, talking about the jobs there you know definitely two types you know one is like a, a company who generally outsource uh, another financial firm and uh, there are many financial firms like big four they manage the funds of the another company but you know uh, i definitely love to be in in-house in -house finance yeah ah that's interesting brilliant cool well, we'll move we'll, we'll move swiftly on because we've got a couple couple more discussion points and then we you know we've got some really good questions that we must uh, we must tackle as well um We've been doing this throughout our series of postgraduate uh, uh, webinars and sessions, and, uh, and we're going to do it in this one as well. Uh, we're going to ask Zi Cheng and Nilesh for the module highlight, the one module, the favorite module, because we could be here till Christmas. Uh, we could be here for a long time if we go through every single module on the course. Um, but I'm going to ask you first, Zi Cheng, if you had to choose one module, and it can be your own. What would be your your own module highlight? What's your favorite part of the, of, uh, of any of the three finance uh, programs? Um, if I need to choose a module that I like the most, um, surprisingly, no, definitely not mine. No, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, if I have to choose one, I think it's statistics actually, um, okay. either econ econometrics or uh, what's it called, the, the quantitative. Uh, the quantitative method, isn't it? Yeah. yeah for, for the, so, uh, but the reason is why. Well, it's all about logic. It's all about logic. Uh, like I said earlier, you know the basic techniques. You know DC, DCF model model. 
whatever model that you learn, they, you know, as long as you put in the hours, you can, you can learn it, you know, you can calculate it, it's no problem. But it's all about the mind itself, you know. Um, numbers are, to my view, numbers are fact. Numbers have no emotion, right? So learning about statistics, to me personally, is somehow changed the way I think about things. Uh, because, you know, as human beings, we tend to, you know, capture what is most easily captured, which is, you know, for example, two things happening at the same time. One is going up, the other is going down, and we just tend to link them. It, nobody has to teach us. We just do it quite naturally. Um, for example, you, many people say that the increase in immigration leads to a rise in comp competition in the job market. But economists who obviously do statistics, and they think about it in a different way. Um, for example, rising immigration, yes, they probably compete for some job, but they also consume as well. Right. Mm. So they create demand and demand create jobs. So that increase in the competition in the job market is only a temporary rise. And it may be caused by something else. We don't know. So this is statistics. Statistics really is just to find the relationship that is rational, you know, between two or three or whatever, how many variables. Another interesting fact, um, instead of we call it uh, endogeneity, right, which is in a relationship that really don't exist. OK, so. I don't know if it's appropriate example. If you look at the lady and she looks back, it doesn't mean she likes you. She doesn't know who, who's, who yeah. the hell is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> an interesting example, um, if you think about two data series, right? One is your height, your height, change of your height in the last, I don't know, 20 years, right? And then you think about the height of a tree outside your window for the last 20 years. Very likely it's been growing as well. But then are these two things related? Probably not, right? But then in the financial market, because it's all about people, so people tend to link unrelated things together. Um, and that, that, you know, that caused a lot of problems. So to cut the long story short, I think statistics is, well, is my pick because it really teaches you to separate fact from what you think it is. Right. And look at the information in a really rational, neutral way. That's going to help you a lot. If you look, all those great investors, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, the George Soros, whatever their investments type is, um, they 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 they're all very rational. Mm. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> well, thank yeah, thanks, Cheng and Nilesh. That's going to be a hard lead to follow, but. For you, obviously, and, and to, to give uh, those of you watching a bit of context, Nilesh, you're in your, you're, you're in, or you're just coming to the end of your first uh, semester. So for you, Nilesh, what has been, I suppose, your favorite module of this first semester? And how do you think, or why have you enjoyed it? And how do you think it's useful perhaps in, in future? Uh, you know, actually, I also love to go with the econometrics, uh, but uh, as in my present teaching blocks, uh, I don't have, I have not come to the econometrics yet. So uh -huh. I'll go with the corporate finance right now. Uh, the reason is that, uh, you know, the, the basics, the corporate, what corporate finance teach, uh, teaches us is how everything in the financial statements go, right from the starting, how it flows to the financial statement. What is the logic behind the, you know, uh, if you put a, uh, just like an asset in the financial statement. So what is the logic of that? How it is coming in the financial statement? How, how do you calculate the values? So, you know, corporate finance teaches, teach you everything in terms of basics that you will be needing in, uh, you know, uh, when you are an analyzing the financial statements. So presently I'll go with the corporate finance part of Brilliant. Thank you both. What I'm going to do, we're going to just, um, we're just going to flash up, and I, I promised everybody that we won't go into a huge amount of depth over all of the different modules and all of the different opportunities within the course, because it would take a long time because there's a lot. Um, but I did want to just give you all a very quick overview before we do break for, for some questions, um, you know, of, of sort of typically what you, what you could expect to study on each, uh, on each of the three uh, specialist finance courses. You can see here. Um, obviously, the investment management program, which we discussed earlier on, and, and the influence there from the from the CFA um, accreditation um, too. Um, you'll notice that all three programs do have the independent project at the end of it, and perhaps we can we can discuss that during uh, you know at the, the end of the, the session as part of the, um, the Q and A shortly. 
international banking and finance here. Um, I don't know if we touched on this one quite as much early on in the uh, in, in 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 our in our conversation um, today. Um, there's some quite interesting modules on on here, Zee Chen, credit lending, fintech as well. Um, this, am I right in saying this is a new a new module for 2021? That's right, James. This is new. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, and of course, the international finance, which which Nilesh, you'll be very uh, very familiar with too. And there's uh, there's econometrics. Uh, you you can see it there. It's going to be in the first uh, teaching block uh, in 2021. Um, and of course, there's, there's the independent project there. So we will jump into some, uh, some questions um, very shortly, quite conscious of time. Um, and there's some really good uh, queries coming through. So do send them in if you want to, uh, to ask Nilesh or, or Zi Cheng um, any, any questions at all. I did want to just cover off um, entry requirements and applying very quickly. Um, so you might, have, you might have seen this already on the website, um, but uh, we do ask for typically um, a 2-2 um, or obviously a non-UK equivalent as Nilesh is, is very, uh, very familiar with. In an undergraduate de degree discipline that is uh, related essentially. So it doesn't mean that it has to have finance in the title, but you know, we would like you to have covered um, sufficient finance um, in your undergraduate degree um, to, to be able to apply. So you know, for most of you, you, you'll probably know whether or not that's the case. If you do have any doubts though, and do get in touch with us and we will share our contact address very, very shortly. Um, you know, we are always happy to have that conversation with you. Um, don't forget to a lot of scholarship opportunities out there. So when you do apply, um, then uh, then do do consider these as well. Um, yeah, huge, huge opportunities there. I should point that the, the, the Thrive and the Ride, the Wave scholarships that you can see at the top there, they're yet to be confirmed for September 2021. We're hoping that that will be um, signed off and ready to go very, very soon. Um, it's been the case, obviously, for the last uh, year or so. So, so I've, I've kept them on the slide for that reason. Lots of other opportunities too. The IDO International um, our international Office offer an excellent scholarship, which is worth up to £4,000. We've got our own Developing Futures Scholarship in the School of Management. And there's various external opportunities, particularly uh, the New Study in Wales Scholarship, which uh, the amount of which varies depending on where you're applying uh, from, essentially. So do look into those and do ask us if you've got any questions about those as well. Um, and you can see there the email address on screen um, to do so. so. So make a note of that because it will probably be useful at some point in the next uh, few weeks and months as you do put together um, an application. So let's deal with questions now. Um, we've got quite a few that have come in through Zoom, through Facebook Live. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive into those, keep them coming, use that Q&A tab, comment on the Facebook stream, or of course, if you're watching on demand, then send us an email to the address that you can see there. Um, let's go for so we've got a yeah we've got five or six minutes left so let's go for the top question here so um and maybe easy cheng this might be this might be a good one if you're able to answer this one so hi everyone um it's come in anonymously um it asks hi everyone do you have any tips for finding a career in asset management i'm hoping to study an investment masters um what would your expertise be there uh, Zi cheng um I think first thing is, thank you for the question though. The first thing to think about is which asset group that you're interested in because investment, obviously asset managers is a, is a, is a, is a huge you know, umbrella. Uh, so there are equity investment and fixed income investment. Um, so if you're interested in how company makes money, how, how companies operate, then I would recommend equity investment. That is my personal favorite. Uh, if you're interested, <clears throat> not so much in the companies itself, but but on the technicality, uh, for example, um, a bond, you know, or, or derivatives trading and things like that, then you can look at uh, fixed income uh, investment uh, area. Um, but you can also look at uh, uh, client management. You know, that's a, another a huge side of asset management uh, to to deal with. Uh, uh, you know, um, manage wealth for for high net worth individual. If you're a if you're a people person, if you like to talk to people, uh, then you may look at that as well. So there are various ways of contributing into this into this industry. So the first thing is just know what you like the most first in terms of asset type. Brilliant, lovely. Thanks, Yu Cheng. Um, no, that that's great. And this so next question come come in. This is one perhaps Nilesh might be able to, to help out with this question too. So um, 
is asking, uh, hi, I studied accounting and finance for my undergraduate degree. Will the MSc International Finance repeat a lot of what I learned on the accounting and finance course? Um, Nilesh, perhaps do you want to answer that one first of all, because obviously you, you studied a similar uh, undergraduate degree um, in India. Are you finding much crossover yourself? Uh, yeah, thanks, James. Uh, I would definitely like to answer this question. Uh, you know, uh, what the uh, you, the modules of the university depends, you know, it's, it is different from uni university to university. Mm. Uh, and first of all, uh, I would like to say that, you know, postgraduate is always a step up from the undergrad degree. Mm. So um, first, basically, in, in the accounting and finance, uh, what I personally studied uh, was a part of finance, it was a part of accounting, it was a part of economics. So it was not a core finance, core, it was not a core of anything. So uh, right now what I'm studying is a core finance. So basically everything is related to finance, no accounts, no every, no nothing. So everything is related to finance. So yeah, you will definitely get something which will be repeated. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the basics. Basics are always come up, you know, from start right from the starting to the end. But uh, not all the not all the things are, you know, repeated. Yeah. So it's a, it's a higher level, I suppose, is what you're, you're getting at. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. Um, I am conscious of time, so I'll, I'll rattle through the last uh, couple of questions here. Thank you, Nilesh. Um, next one referring to, so what's, what software and databases do you use in the quants related course content? Uh, oh, you see Cheng, <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot with, with that one. What, 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 do you, what do you think? Are you able to, to go into any depth on that? at this stage yeah thanks for the question uh in terms of software we use uh what is called stata s-t-a-t-a -A. <clears throat> so the school purchased the uh, the license for the software and that is uh, uh used uh in uh, uh for statistical analysis okay i'm sure nilesh uh, knows that uh, as well so but if you if you know other software for example um eview or even more advanced in a programming language uh, you can you can use whatever you like but but stata is the standard software uh, databases yes we we do have a bunch of databases uh financial and, and accounting databases for example CompuStat. um uh Thomson Reuters um, for, for 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 UK for UK uh, companies, um, uh, so so you will have uh, quite a few databases to work with uh, for personal and you know uh, interest as well as the final dissertation um, analysis as well. Brilliant, that's okay. great. Thanks, Yi Cheng. Uh, time for one more question. Um, so, oh, well, this is good. This is a good one. So. From my current understanding, um, oh, we've got another late ones coming as well. So from my current understanding, finance firms can take a special interest in students who have an engineering, mathematical or other quantitative undergraduate background. Do you think this way of thinking applies to the master's program that you choose? Oof. I can, yeah, I can uh, contribute to that a little yeah. bit. What do you yeah. think? <laughs> uh, that is a very good question. Ab the answer is absolutely, uh, because uh, finance is partially about numbers and the financial industry needs people who can build models, for example, cash flow models, arbitrage trading models. Uh, two of my st previous students, I think two years ago, one is from Italy, the other from Greece, uh, they had engineering and IT background. And I think one of them is now a broker uh, obviously working with, you know, trading model and the other is working with, uh, I think, working the, in the back office in Credit Suisse. So absolutely, this is exactly, um, exactly the right background. So this pro specialist program do not require, um, definitely require finance, finance background, uh, but definitely welcome uh, people with um, this sort of, you know, uh, science, science, science background. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Zicheng. Um, we do have one more question. It's Got to be the last one because we're very short of time. So I'm just going to share our email address once more uh, on the screen, studysom at swansea.ac.uk. This, you know, we might be drawing drawing this session to a close, but there's plenty of opportunity to have more discussions with us, um, be it one-to-one -one or or however, however you want to. Um, this question then, Zi Cheng, if you're able to answer this, this is a tough one. So it might be one that needs a little bit more, more context or a bit more time, but uh, it asks, hi, this is for Zi Cheng. I'm in my final year of accounting and finance and only recently got interested in investment banking and investment management. Uh, what can I do to learn more? Um, and also I'm 
I'm also interested in the effects that the MSCI index have on development. How would you propose I research that? That's a great question. I think that's the best question we've had on all of the webinars so far. <laughs> so Zicheng, are you, is that something you're able to answer now? Or okay, you, uh, I'll try, I'll try. Okay. Thanks for the question. Um, now, part one of your question, uh, how, what can you do to learn more? I think the, the quickest way is the quickest way is to uh, pick a typical, you know, uh, investment bank, for example, uh, Goldman or you know J.P. Morgan, all the big names. Pick one of them and just look at their business structures. They're all very similar among these among, among these guys. But I think that's the quickest way for you to have a firm, uh, quick grasp of just what these guys do. Um, you know, uh, investment banking is not just about investment banking, investment banking business like advisory or IPO or merger and acquisition. It's you know pretty much everything. So have a, that's my suggestion. Have a look at that. Um, now, in terms of MNCI index on development, um, I would say go to Google Scholar and search for a academic paper. Just put in a keyword MNCI index um, effect or you know, whatever keyword that you like in terms of you know, the, the, the effect, right? Uh, so search for a paper, have a look at the introduction um, because this is a broad area. So I, 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 I can't you know, pinpoint any particular area, but I think uh, reading one academic paper uh, should, should um, you know, uh, answer some of your question that you, you, you have in mind. Um, that, that, I think that's the quickest way to do it. I, I would do it. I would do it. Brilliant. Thanks, Yi Cheng. And yeah, and thank you for, well, for all of the questions that, that we've had so far um, today. It's been re yeah, really, uh, really, really useful. We must uh, draw the session to a close. It's flown by today. Um, I'm conscious that we, uh, you know, we've kept everyone uh, engaged and kept everyone watching for, for quite a while. So, I mean, for, for me, um, I want to, just want to say a huge thanks, well, to everybody who's watching and also um, to Zi Cheng and Nilesh for, for giving up uh, part of their afternoon to uh, to have this uh, have this conversation today so yeah thank you both very much um remember you know if you're watching and you do want to carry on the conversation remember that email address uh we're more than happy to get a uh, one-to-one -one sort of zoom session arranged um you know so we can discuss a potential application or your own circumstances in a little bit more depth so yeah do drop us a message if, you, if you'd like to do that and we'll we'll take it further um, as well as, uh, of course, there's plenty of opportunity to chat to, to current students. If you pop in Swansea Student Ambassador chat onto Google, you'll find it straight away at the top of the list. Um, and there's loads of other great resources online um, as well. So, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, yeah, thank you, Nilesh, and thank you, Zicheng, uh, again for, for being here today. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. So, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, thanks Nilesh. Thank Cheers, you. Guys. Thanks, James. And see you all soon. Take yeah. care. Bye-bye.